Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you ever so much for joining us for our first webinar from the Critical Minerals Association in 2022. Uh, absolutely delighted this morning that we are working with, um, with the British Embassy in Luanda in Angola uh, on this webinar called Breaking Ground, the Diversification of the Angolan Mining Sector. Uh, it's an honour this morning to be joined by so many excellent people on our, on our panel. Uh, we're going to have a series of presentations and then we'll get to a Q&A towards the end. So if you do have any questions and answers uh, or questions, please put them in the Q&A box, uh, the bottom right of your, of your um, uh, Zoom, and we'll try and get to those at the end. We've got a, a relatively tight uh, time frame to fit everyone in. Um, hi, Daniel. Um, so uh, we will jump straight into it. So I am absolutely delighted that we're going to start with um, the Sector Director for Mining in Africa from DIT Africa, which is Sally Bevington. Hello, Sally. Morning, Jeff. Right, let me take it from there. Thanks, Jeff. Good morning and a warm welcome to all our distinguished officials, members of the UK investment community, private sector players, diplomatic trade and investment colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I'd like to say thank you for the opportunity to speak at today's webinar on behalf of the United Kingdom's Department of International Trade on opportunities in the Angolan mining sector. I'm sure this marks the beginning of many such discussions around this topic. When speaking to the mining and investment community about mining in Angola, most are aware of the country's long history of oil and gas and diamond production and the difficulty of operating within the state controlled country. Some people may be aware of the vast mineral wealth that the country has been endowed with, but unfortunately, very few know anything about the recent changes within the country, now making Angola a very attractive destination for exploration across a number of commodities. And that is why we are here today. We at the UK DIT believe that changes to legislation brought about by the president's ambitious economic reform plan a few years ago have opened many investment opportunities across the mining sector, including in the increasingly important critical mineral space. The economic reform plan presented in 2017 focused on diversifying the economy away from oil, increasing foreign and domestic investment and supporting private sector development. Although the plan lost traction during the, the global COVID-19 pandemic, commentators believe that investors are now looking at Angola again with a lot of interest and that there is a very positive outlook for the country. From a personal perspective, I have always been fascinated by Angola's mineral wealth. I remember doing some desktop studies many years ago, looking at base metal opportunities in the far east of the country. And I was really excited by the underexplored nature of the region. I also very quickly realized that it was going to be incredibly difficult to get onto the ground without significant changes being made to the mining laws and policies. So it's exciting for me to see that new measures have been implemented, which will facilitate sustainable, transparent and equitable growth in the sector, meaning that the very underexplored country of Angola is now very much open for business. Doing a bit of research to see how much exploration and mining is currently taking place, I was encouraged to note that new gold mines establishing themselves in the north have to do so under very strict environmental policies involving reforestation and meaningful community commitments. Other articles talk of a strong female presence within the diamond mining sector and some highlight development hubs being built with green energy forming a prominent part of the infrastructure. And although the diamond sector is expected to grow and become a far greater contributor to the GDP, there is a strong focus on other commodities that are also present in Angola. As we are all very much aware, ESG principles are fundamental to the success of any mining operation going forward. And to see that the government is driving this highlights the significant work that has been achieved by the new policies implemented. The importance of critical minerals is growing and is prominent in any discussion around net zero ambitions or clean growth initiatives. The presence of these minerals in Angola has been proven and represents another significant opportunity for further exploration and investment into the country. Today, we'll hear more from the Angolan National Agency of Mineral Resources about the changes that have been made 
including the new measures introduced to support foreign investment. We'll hear about the country's mineral wealth from the Geological Institute of Angola through their National Geological Survey Program. And more importantly, we'll hear from the companies that have realized the potential of the country and are currently active in both exploration and mine development. The UK Angola Chamber of Commerce will then give a brief overview of their role. And without spoiling any of the concluding remarks, we'll hear more about DIT's upcoming plans. So I invite you all to sit back and enjoy a cup of tea or coffee while you listen to the speakers talk about breaking ground, the diversification of the Angolan mining sector. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sally, for, for a wonderful overview uh, and, and really setting the agenda as we move forwards. That is much appreciated. Like you said, we have some excellent people joining us today. Uh, and uh, thank you for everyone who's tuned in as well. Um, I can see you're all active on the chat as well. So that's that's marvellous. Um, so we are now very lucky to have Dr. Jacinta Rocha from ANRM joining us. And that will be a presentation on the vision for the mining sector in Angola, diversifying opportunities and changes made to the legislative environment. Good morning, Dr. Jacinta. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for inviting us to participate in this very important uh, event. It is the first of the many to come because as we say in the mining sector, Angola is a big elephant country. Uh, I'll share with you in, in general terms, the vision of the Angolan government in relation to the mining sector. I'll talk to you about the institutional legislative changes introduced into Angola because the mining legislation has not changed since 2011. In, I, in relation to the opportunities in the mining sector in Angola, I'll leave it up to the Geological Institute of Angola to, to share the areas of potential for various minerals in Angola. And uh, engineer Paulo Tangaya will share, will share it with you. If you see, see me struggling, because this is what is happening now. I'm trying to move my, my screen and the, the, my slide and it's, the, it's not obeying my, my instructions. Uh, I'll continue as the technical people try and sort out the, pro, the, the problem. So I have a presentation here with me and you can then share, but unfortunately I cannot change it from here. Uh, I'll talk to you about, I'll give you a short introduction share with you the legislative framework in Angola because this is what entices and interests a lot of you. I'll share also with you the, a summary of the fiscal regime. Ultimately talk about the Angolan government's vision of the mining sector and give you some concluding remarks. In so far as introductory side is concerned, the agency was created in 2010, in June, uh, June 2020. And it is the public institution responsible for the promotion, regulation, and monitoring of the mining sector. And the board members are appointed by the president upon recommendation of the minister. Very important. And this is a new trend in Angola. The agency is autonomous. So it is an institution that reports to the minister, but it is not part of the ministry. It's an administratively, financially, and patrimonially autonomous body. And I think for foreign investors, especially those who often concern about political interference, this creation of a Chinese wall between the political and the administrative is quite critical. And this is the new route that the Angolan government is, is following. And in so far as the extractive industry is concerned, uh, we have two institutions. One is the one that regulates the mining sector. And then on the petroleum side, we also have one that regulates the petroleum industry. So Angola is moving towards the decisions relating to mining that are technically take, take, taken by technical technocrats. 
and not 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 uh, not by politicians and this is why the agency was created for all for those who who are not aware of Angola. Angola is a multi-party democracy. Uh, it is politically and socially stable country and a very critical and important element for foreign investors is that we honor our contractual obligations. So once, and I'll share with you the, the process for licensing in Angola, once we sign a mineral investment contract that is, contains obligations of the state uh, represented by the National Mineral Resources Agency, we keep and stick to it. Next slide, please. What is the political system in, in Angola? One, we have a, a written constitution and our constitution reigns supreme. We respect and observe the law, principles of rule of law. We respect and protect private property. There is a separation of powers between the executive, legislative, and the judiciary. The Constitution of Angola recognizes and accepts free market, a free market economy. It is very rare to have countries where its own constitution chooses the economic system. So in Angola, our constitution, which is supreme, is in the, indicates that the free market economy is the economic system that the Angolan government has, has chosen, or the Angolan people have chosen, and the role of the state is just to co regulate and coordinate economic development. If you have followed the developments in Angola, we are very strong in a privatization of state entities. We have a, a specific program where the state has decided that it will get, get out in the business of doing private sector business, and it will focus on on the coordination and the regulation of the, the economy. And that is why we have created the National Mineral Resources Agency because the role of the state is, one is to regulate, but also the other one is coordinate and in the coordination comes facilitation of economic development in the country through using the private sector. In other words, we see the private sector as, as the tool for promotion of economic activity within the, the Angolan nation and no, not, not government. Next slide, please. Now, what is the regulatory instrument that we use in the mining sector? I'm using the Angolan, the Portuguese term Código Mineiro, which is the mining code. This mining code has been around since uh, September 2011, we have not introduced any changes to, to the code yet. And should we increase, should we introduce any, any change, it will not be anytime soon. We, we like to have uh, regulatory certainty, so we don't want to, to introduce changes where it is not necessary. Like any other country in the world, say for the USA, uh, mineral resources whilst in the ground is the property of the state, but once they are lawfully extracted, they are the property of the person who holds the title to it, which is if a company has been granted a mineral title and it, it removes the minerals, the minerals belong to, to, that com to, to that entity, mineral titles are transferable and you can use it as a mortgage to obtain financing. For investors, the code prohibits expropriation of mineral titles. Next slide, please. When you want to acquire mineral titles, there are two ways of acquiring it. One is the initiative of the investor, and the second one is a public tender. Public tender happens in areas where we have identified that there is a huge potential. We have available information. We set it out to tender, we did it in 2019, and we are in the process of identifying potential areas where we might have to, to put it on public tender. But the normal process, which is also similar to what happened in other countries, is the interested party submits an application. Um, one distinguishing element of factor in the 
Angolan licensing process is the approval or signing and approval of a mineral investment contract. You don't find it in many countries. In other words, we negotiate, a company applies for a mineral title, we negotiate a mineral investment contract and thereafter a mineral title issue, but the basic foundation is the existence of mineral investment contract that regulates the, the life of the mine or life of the project in, in Angola. The license is just an administrative tool for us to, to control the, the activity, but the base is contractual. Next slide, please. Now, when you apply, yes, we would want to know who you are. So you are going to provide us uh, information about your company because mining sector requires technical and financial capacity. We are also going to expect you to, to give us any, any of your technical and financial capacity in, in a, because my mineral titles are related to a specific area we are going to give us the coordinates of the area of interest and the coordinate system that we use is the WG, WGS84, which is an international system. Next slide, please. Uh, in the, prior to the negotiation of the mineral investment contract, as I said, we have applied. Minister appoints a, the negotiation commission, which then operates independently from the process without being influenced either by the agency, the, the chairman of the agency, or by the minister. This is an independent commission that negotiates the process, and then they come with the, with the results of the negotiations and then provide us with the instrument that has to be approved, which is the mineral investment contract. A, on, in the prospecting phase, the maximum period for a duration of the contract is five years, renewable twice for the periods of one year, but there is also, there is potential for a, a third renewal. There is an evaluation uh, period of two, 12 months and then the exploration of my mining phase, including the prospecting phase goes up to 35 years. So you'd have a mineral investment contract, which covers for a, a maximum period of 35 years, which is then renewable for additional periods of, of 10 years. During the, that period, you then apply, you then only apply for the li relevant license. So if you are in the prospecting phase, you apply for a prospecting title. If you are in the exploration phase, mining phase, you then also apply for, for a, a mi mining title. The evaluation phase, there is no need for a license. It is part of your, your, your investment program where you indicate i'm going to do prospecting then there is going to be an assessment evaluation phase and then there is going to be a the, the my mining phase next slide please now in order for us to attract investors there are incentives that are granted in terms of of the act and the act sets out the criteria for granting those in incentives. Their incentives are negotiated during the, the negotiations of the mineral investment contract. Next slide, please. I'll show you next the fiscal regimes which relate to the royalties. Royalties range from between two and 5%, 5% being for strategic minerals, especially diamonds and, 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 and gold. Your prospecting fees are payable per square kilometer, and it stand, uh, starts from seven US dollars, the the, the, the Kwanzaa equivalent to it, and it goes up to 40, 40 US dollars. 40 US dollars, you'll be paying it on, a, on your fifth year. But there is also a provision in the law that encourages the company to reduce the, the, the area. So the smaller your area, the less you pay. If you want to, the maximum uh, area for, for prospecting in Angola is 10,000 square kilometers. So if you have a 10,000 square kilometers and you want to pay the seven, seven, seven US dollars per square kilometers, you, you will have around 70,000 US dollars. But if you reduce the areas as you go in the years, 
then you 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 may pay. But if you retain the ten thousand square kilometers in the in the in the fifth year, and you want to renew it as as ten thousand. Then you are going to pay as, as we wish. And the income tax for the mining sector is around 25%, which is less than the rest of the industry in, in Angola. The, the, the rest of the economy, they pay 30%. Uh, next slide, please. Now, in terms of what is it really that we want? We would want to increase the number of junior and major foreign mining companies in the country. We have some, they are coming, and some of them are going to present today, but we want more. We really are looking for juniors because we know that they are, the juniors are the ones who, who search for ground, they work the ground, and if they, they cannot go into mining, they sell it off to, to the majors. We are looking for this type of risk takers who, who want to run around looking for ground and work the ground. Uh, we want to, to have a that we know that in Angola, the tendency is for people to, to look at diamonds. Yes, we have a, a great future for the diamond industry in Angola. That sector has been around for 100 years, but what, for what we have, it is for more than 100 years. Uh, engineer Paulo Tanganya will show you the potential for Angola, and we want to diversify not only the economy, but we also want to diversify the Angolan mining sector. No, start for focusing on other commodities that we have to offer. We want a mining sector that contributes to the socioeconomic development of the areas. There is no longer any country in the world where mining companies come in and they don't directly contribute to the socioeconomic development. It is a new moral uh, and political value that uh, most of the countries have adopted. Angola has also done the same. We want companies that are conscious about their environmental obligations, no destroying, no messing up of, of the environment. This is the type of company that we want, but this is also the vision that we, we would want to have is a clean, environmentally compliant mining sector. Finally, in terms of the vision, we want to increase the level of local beneficiation where, where, where possible with, within, the, within the country. And I know in the, one of your presentations here today, one of you might show the extent to which that they are going, also going to do local beneficiation. Next slide, please. Finally, the, uh, Angola is geologically attractive. Angola is legally politically and socially secure. And once you decide to come and invest in Angola, you have signed a uh, mineral investment contract. We have issued you with a relevant mineral title. Your investments are protected. Thank you very much. Obrigado, Dr. Jacinto. Um, thank you ever so much. I, I think that's a really excellent overview of, of the legislative uh, position the companies who look to, to travel and, and uh, go to Angola face. Uh, and it's, it's good to see that everything is, is nice and squared away. Um, next, we're going to hand on quickly to, uh, to, to uh, Paolo, who is a consultant um, at the Geological Institute of Angola, who's going to do an overview of what's there. Paolo. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, can you see my presentation? Yes, we can. Thank you, Paolo. Ah, all right, that's great. Okay, thank you for this opportunity to share a bit uh, about the work which was done by Prana Chao. Uh, to start, uh, I'll talk about seven points, but the most important one I consider to be the seventh point, which we are going to talk about, the occurrences of critical minerals in, in Angola. 
To start, I would like to share with you the general uh, and the specific objectives of Planet Geo. To say that the Planet Geo means the National Geological Plan. It's a plan led by the Angolan government, which the which main aim is to improve the geological knowledge and update the inventory of mineral occurrence at national level. To say that uh, the Geological Institute of Angola works more at the regional uh, scale, uh, and we prepare the inventory and those areas with the high potential uh, so that we can attract uh, investors, either local or foreign investors. And uh, by doing that, we provide the reliable geological information to investors on an acceptable scale to sustain decision-making process on the realization of mining investment. So this is something that uh, the Afro African mine vision has been uh, stating that uh, African country must provide the reliable information for, to, to investors. And Angola as part of the African uh, Union is doing the same and trying to, to improve the mining investment in our country. The third objective is to, is to restructure, build the technical capacity, and equip the Geological Institute, which means uh, uh, when we talk about restructuring, it's, it's a concern about like physical uh, infrastructures, like buildings, uh, laboratories, as well as at the institutional level. As, as Dr. Jacinto Rocha has explained, the Angolan government is trying to improve the business environment and the uh, EGO is part of the, of the process. When we talk about building techno capacity, while we are doing, a, uh, we are executing the activities at the plant and show level, we are being training Angolian geoscientists uh, in an on-job training uh, a model. This, and we've been achieving nice uh, results. Uh, new expertise have been acquired, and these geologists are serving the Geological Institute to resolve many problems in, 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 in terms of geology and mining activity. By doing the three main objectives, we come to the last one, which, which is about fostering and implement policies conducive to the development of mining activity in Angola. This also involves the diversification of uh, mining production or mineral production in Angola. For us to implement Plan Ageo, the Angolan government divided the, 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 the plan into six sub-programs, uh, starting from urban geophysics, then we did geology, geochemistry, uh, specific studies, which is being conducted in the areas with a higher uh, mineral potential, infrastructures, and capacity building, as I just explained. All right, uh, and second point, Plan Ageo and the regions and operators. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you are still following my slides. Yes, we are. Okay, okay. that's great, yeah, thanks. Yes, uh, for us to allow that the Plan Ageo can be conducted in a very short period of time, we divided the country into three regions, uh, namely the north, which was assigned to a company called CITIC, which is a Chinese company. The eastern part was assigned to a Brazilian company, Costa Negocio, and the southern part of the country was assigned to a joint venture company uh, uh, made by the Geological Survey of Portugal, Spanish, and a private company, a private company from Spain uh, as well. Uh, there have been very good development of the planetary activities in the southern area. S ongoing activities are still being conducted in the northern area, while in the eastern part of the country is still paralyzed, and the Angolan government is planning to, re to restart the activities as from this year, 2022. Now I'm going to give uh, uh, an overview about the sub programs that uh, uh, makes the Plan Ageo. The first one, urban geophysics. We did a geo uh, urban geophysics surveys using two methods, magnetics and the radiometrics. And uh, the results are these maps that, uh, that I'm showing here. 
uh, including the digital elevation model. The, in terms of survey parameters, the line spacing was about uh, 100, uh, 1,000 meters, which is one kilometer. The flight altitude was plus minus 120 meters. By using the information that we acquired during the airborne geophysics surveys, we managed to divide the country into nine main domains. What domains means? Those are related to the mega structures associated with uh, both the geophysics signature as well as the geological data. And uh, each domain is associated with a specific type of mineral occurrences. This doesn't mean that those minerals can only be found within those domains. However, those, the, however, they can be found in other places in Angola, but those domains are the most favorable place where mineral occurrences can occur. For example, domain one, which we call it the copper belt, uh, we made a correlation with the copper belt in DRC and Zambia. And based, by analyzing our airborne geophysical data, we saw a signature of continuation of that belt into the Angolan territory. The reason why we delineated this, uh, uh, the domain one as copper belt. When we talk about gold, where can gold be found in Angola? Domain two, domain four, and domain nine, which is the Cabinda provinces, are the favorable place for us to find mineral occurrences of gold. And uh, if, when we talk about uh, nickel and uh, PGEs, minerals, we have to go to dom domain three, which is this one close to Kunen or close to Namibia border between uh, with Angola. And this domain is really, it covers what we call the Gabro anorthosite complex or the Kunen anorthosite complex, right? I, will, I would like to share more, but uh, I only have about 10 minutes, then I'll proceed. As we did the uh, further geological studies, we integrated the data with geophysics and we managed to, delin to delineate smaller domains, as I can show in here. Uh, these help us in the targeting process for prospecting uh, concessions, all right? So this has been very useful and uh, we are using it with uh, different companies, for example, uh, Anglo-American, for us to select their concession in Angola, they use this data. Now talking about the geology sub-program. Uh, the geology in Angola, uh, in terms of planar geo, they were done in, in three main scales. One by 250,000, one by 100,000, and one by 50,000. These are the three major scales. Then uh, we compiled the data into smaller scales, which is one by 500,000 and one by 1 million. For those who know the geological data of Angola, they know that in the past, the very old data, they don't show much detail as this map shows. In here, uh, by doing mapping uh, in the scope of Pranajer, we managed to identify more geological units, and uh, we updated the tectonic or structural geology data as well. Uh, this work is totally completed in a southern part of Angola, and uh, this data is being validated by Russians so that uh, we can have a, a real process for quality assurance, quality control, so that the, the data would, which is going to be provided to investors are of a high quality. In terms of geochemistry, uh, in the southern part of Angola, it was done. It's still ongoing activity in the north part of Angola. I would like to share more data on that, but uh, we selected just one map sheet, which is called uh, the South D33M, the Monino uh, map sheet, is the one that I will just show with you some interpretation that we did. Uh, since we are talking about the critical minerals, we choose to show some graphs related to the rare earth element signatures. For the first map, these ones here, uh, there are so many elements, but I would like to 
talk about the, the neodymium uh, signature, which is uh, more than one in terms of year, its content. So it's quite high. And the, the, the Persana uh, company, which is going to present, the exploring this kind of uh, mineral resources in a long of concession. The same one is also shown in, in this figure here for felsic rocks. The high occurrences of neo, neodymium also in this map sheet. There are still a lot of data of this quality. Uh, for the southern, uh, southern part of Angola, there are a total of 44 map sheets with uh, all this information from geophysics, geology, geochemistry, so that the investors are welcome to, to visit the Geological Institute of Angola to have access to this data. As the work or the sub-program for urban geophysics, for geology and, the, and geochemistry were completed, uh, data were interpreted and we managed to select areas with a high mineral potential according to their types. The different polygons that are shown in here, I'm not so sure if you can see or read the metallogenetic provinces here, but just to say that the greenish province, which are marked here, right? These are related to copper provinces, right? Is where the geology is favorable for the occurrences of uh, copper mineral resources. The reddish polygon shows the iron ore provinces. If you want to explore iron in the southern part of Angola, these are the main areas where you can find iron. Then the, the bluish polygons, as you can see here, these ones, they show areas with uh, rare earth elements occurrences, which, which are associated with the critical minerals. So all the investors that the, uh, attending this event can easily see in terms of their targeting exercise for prospecting area where they can where they have to go in terms of uh, rare, rare earth elements. Just to say also that uh, we we produce a total of thirty nine map sheets at a scale of one by fifty thousand with all these metallogenetic details. And those maps were carefully selected because they showed higher uh, geological and mineral potential while we're doing with the mapping at the scales of 100 by two, one by 250,000 and one by 100,000. Coming to the last point, uh, this is just the list of uh, all critical minerals according to the European Union uh, data that we access. And then we compared with what we have in the country. Those which are bold are the ones that uh, we didn't identify yet in our country, but the rest of them, they are available. They are in total, um, plus or minus 45 of them are available in the country. The location of at least Statistics of the most important minerals and substance are indicated in these maps. Um, just to say that uh, in Planagel, we the aim is to identify at least 51 elements, chemical elements per sample, plus 10 compounds in each sample. So it's some is a, a really an ambition, uh, ambitious uh, goal. We are maintaining them, and the, the data is available, and the investor can access them if they visit IGO. That's all that I have to present at the moment. Thanks for your attention. Got it, Paulo. It sounds like you've been very busy and continue to be so as well. Um, Olympia, who is helping us with the IT and is part of the CMA as a geologist, was very excited to see the maps. Um, so thank you ever so much. Um, so next, we're going to hand over to Javier Tuza and a discovery manager for Southern Africa at Anglo-American. Javier, over to you.
Thank you. Can you see my screen? We can. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. No, thanks very much for the for for, for the invitation and the, the 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 opportunity to be here. Uh, I hope the internet is fine. I'm currently in the in the field, so let's let's see. Um, the, the the idea of the presentation is basically is two main parts. Okay, so the first part is is about like an introduction to Anglo American. So who we are, what do we do, and how do we do it? And the second part is basically Anglo American uh, in Angola. So in terms of Anglo American, uh, Anglo American is a diversified global mining company. It was founded in 1917, so it has been around for a long time. And basically, what we do is like we produce different products that are essential to almost everything that we do in the modern life. We have a world-class portfolio of different commodities that we use uh, basically innovative practices and the latest technologies as well to discover those products. So we go through all of the change. So we work in exploration in discovery, then we build the operations and then we do the production. And we are responsible producers of diamonds uh, through the beers, copper, platinum group uh, metals, premium quality iron ore and metallurgical coal for steam making and uh, nickel. Also like group uh, nutrients, we are building an operation uh, in UK. Our purpose is reimagine mining to improve people's life. So what this means is basically reimagine mining is to rethink how do we do things, how we can do it uh, in a better way, in a more innovative way, that basically from reducing the our uh, footprint operations, uh, the way that we operate, the way that we operate in a safer way, et cetera, and to improve people's life is basically to ensure that it's, it's about the impact in everything that we do in our business. So that we basically are uh, good neighbors and uh, we provide something that is positive, net positive for all of the communities and countries where we operate. Where do we operate? If we go from, from uh, east to, to, to west, so we operate in, a, in, a, in Australia, then in South Africa, in Zimbabwe, South Africa, Namibia, and Botswana. We have a, an advanced project in Finland, also in United Kingdom, uh, Woodsmith. Then in South America, in Brazil, Chile, and Peru, and in Canada through uh, the beers. So you can see that it's quite a broad a global exposure in, uh, in, in, in commodities that are basically like forward looking, in particular when we are moving into a more sustainable world that needs copper, needs PEs, uh, and, and so on. We have a sustainable mining plan. The sustainable mining plan is basically uh, built in three pillars so, health environments, thriving communities, and being a trusted corporate leaders. Uh, that uh, an example of like healthy environment is, is, is uh, the way that we are reducing the, the use of water, uh, the way that we are using like uh, sustainable or renewable energies, the way that we are using the footprint of the operations, etc. And this is built in some critical uh, foundations that such as leadership and culture, uh, zero arm, human rights, inclusion and diversity, the standards and the compliance with legal, uh, legal requirements. What do we do in Angola? And, 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 and those are two pictures of uh, our team recently taken. Uh, in Angola, we have two big projects. One project you can see in the east, in the Mushiko province. So we have 20,000 square kilometers there. That's basically an extension of the Central African Copper Belt that comes from Zambia, DRC, and then goes to Angola, and then goes to Zambezi in Zambia again. So that project is basically a copper and cobalt uh, project. And then uh, in the Kuneni province, we have a project in the, as, as, as mentioned before, in the um, orthomatic Kuneni um, uh, complex. And basically that one is for nickel and uh, other metals. 
to give you an idea, uh, 50,000 square kilometers is twice the size of Kruger Park. So that that's give you an idea like, 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 like the size of the of the projects. Our team in Angola, uh, basically, as I mentioned, we we we, we start uh, we got the the concession from the government in April 2020, and uh, 2020 was a complicated year for obvious reasons to to conduct field activities. So actually, we got, we began the field activities last year. And now we have the first four employees uh, in country. So we have a project geologist, one discovery geologist, environmental and community specialist, and one permitting logistical specialist. And we are currently in the process of recruiting uh, for more team members. So we are preparing for the 2022 uh, field campaign. The main activities that we conducted last year in 2021 basically relate to the to the three places that you see there. The one in the left uh, is a company called NRG. They do uh, magnetic surveys. So as mentioned before, the uh, government did a uh, 1,000 meters line space in magnetic survey. What we are doing is something like uh, with more density of lines, so we can have a better signal. The one in the middle is a spectrum. What they do is basically an airborne electromagnetic survey. And the helicopter is basically for uh, emergency preparation in case that uh, there, is a, the, 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 there is an incident when doing the, the service. So last year, we completed regional uh, electromagnetic and magnetic service. We did uh, data integration and modeling. And the service is, is, is important to notice as part of some of the largest surveys that Anglo American has been done so far uh, in exploration. And in the Mushiko province, unfortunately, we couldn't complete the surveys because of like, the, the, the short time window. So that's something that we're planning to do this year. But we completed some field reconnaissance visits to the project. In terms of like this year, the idea is to do infill, so basically to go uh, even further in the service that we completed last year in Kuneni. We'll be doing some magnetic, uh, some electromagnetic, radiometric, and gravity surveys in Kuneni. And then in Mushiko will be the same at a different scale. And we are evaluating to the possibilities to do some uh, drilling in Kuneni later in the year. That's it. Thank you very much, Jeff. Wonderful. Thank you ever so much, uh, Javier. And it sounds like you're busy as well. So everyone so far is, uh, is, is working hard and, and progressing nicely and quickly. Uh, and with that in mind, um, we're going to hand over to CEO of Pensana, Tim George, who will also be talking about projects in Angola. Tim, over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> just need to share my screen. Uh, can somebody relinquish sharing so that I can get in? <laughs> yeah. Is that coming through? That is, thank you ever so much. Um, thank you, um, and uh, greetings to the uh, panelists, Dr. Jacinta Rocha. Thank you for that extensive introduction, which will save me a lot of explanation during my presentation. Um, the uh, Pensan is a, a London-listed uh, exploration and mining um, entity. We've been uh, uh, busy in Africa for many years and focused on Angola uh, for the past six years. And uh, really our focus uh, during this, uh, certainly in the last uh, four years has been around the rare earth uh, opportunity, which uh, is a consequence of the global um, energy transition, which I'm sure most of you need no explanation of. Um, our premise is that uh, over the next uh, decade or so, uh, the electric vehicle and uh, offshore wind turbine uh, expansion and transitions will uh, drive the demand for magnet metals, principally uh, neodymium and praseodymium, 
uh, which are key ingredients for the strong permanent magnets that uh, allow efficient conversion of uh, uh, electrical energy into mechanical engineer energy. And uh, it's pretty common knowledge now, I think, that uh, the, the, uh, the sector is poised for significant growth um, over the, the next decade, and uh, Pensana is uh, well positioned to uh, take that opportunity going forward. Um, historically, over the last uh, couple of decades, the uh, China's influence in this uh, side of things has uh, grown to over 95% in terms of the overall uh, processing of uh, rare earth magnets. And uh, as a consequence of their own carbon neutral aspirations uh, for which they see there's an $11 trillion um, stimulus package uh, uh, committed, um, we believe that uh, the world is in dire need of uh, an extension of processing um, and production outside of China uh, while they focus on their own internal requirements as well. Um, at this point in time, uh, outside of um, Southeast Asia, uh, there were only uh, Linus in, in Australia from their Mount Weld operations and processing facility in Malaysia that uh, are actual significant producers alongside uh, Mountain Pass, which uh, concentrate from that particular deposit is uh, still being processed uh, in, in China as we speak. So uh, the positioning of, of uh, Pensana's aspirations with the Longonjo project feeding into a salt end project as a, as a hub, which I'll talk a little bit about later, um, is uh, well positioned for the next decade. Um, one of the aspects that uh, we've found in, in Angola has been, uh, other than significantly uh, discovering um, uh, a, a carbonatite that hosts rare earth minerals um, alongside development of the plant and, uh, and processing facilities has been the adjacency to uh, upgraded infrastructure in Angola, which has occurred over the last five to 10 years, particularly around the uh, uh, reinstatement of the historic uh, uh, Benguela railway line, which connects the port of Libito to the copper belt. Um, and in addition to that, the extensive hydroelectric schemes that have come online um, during the past few years, providing uh, Angola with one of the few countries in, in Africa with uh, an actual excess of generation capacity. Um, there are uh, two gigawatts of, of, of power available for, for industry going forward. Um, that is a key facet to our thinking that uh, the, the, the potential growth in Angola in terms of this diversification policy has, has got a, a strong backbone to build on. Uh, in terms of the actual development of the project in Longonja, we've we've uh, we've been uh, transiting out of exploration into development. We had a, as Dr. Rocha has uh, mentioned, we we've been through the five-year prospecting uh, permit period and uh, have automatically transitioned into a secure. Uh, mining license, uh, which was uh, which was awarded uh, actually at the at the outset of COVID, um, uh, very efficiently. Um, the fiscal terms of that mining investment contract uh, have have been enshrined as 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 mentioned, and our experience of that is is that uh, the transition from prospection into mining activities as a consequence of the regulatory framework that is now established um, offers um, explorers and prospectors a, a, a far more secure uh, regime than perhaps existed in Angola 20 odd years ago. 
Um, in addition to that, uh, we've also had positive uh, investments into our company by the Angolan Sovereign Wealth Fund. Um, they have been a cornerstone investor for the last uh, uh, 18 uh, months or so. And this is one of the few examples of uh, an African country investing in projects in itself um, directly um, as, as, a, as a shareholder. And uh, they have been extremely supportive, uh, particularly during this uh, 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 period where COVID has, uh, has impacted uh, 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 the world in terms of investor sen sentiment. Um, one of the particular aspects, moving on from uh, um, Javier's comments about uh, uh, Anglo's aspirations, is that when we set out to uh, uh, look at this opportunity in Angola, um, we wanted to focus on the long-term future and sustainability and all the ESG, bring as many ESG components into this uh, Angolan operation as possible. The obvious uh, linkages to the hydroelectric power in terms of lowering the, the carbon footprint from uh, a, a typical mining operations perspective in, in, in the middle of, uh, of Africa is a particularly helpful aspect. We brought in the uh, um, Global Industries recommendations and Church of England's pension fund recommendations on the uh, tailings uh, handling to be world class on that front. And this combines with producing a product that is directly uh, a, a feedstock into the clean energy uh, and uh, transition towards uh, net zero carbon aspirations of, of, of the world going forward, um, positions this project as a, as a, as a real leader in, 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 in global terms. Um, it will provide uh, circa 450 direct jobs in, in uh, the Longonjo area. We've been particularly careful to look at opportunities for uh, co-development in other areas, such as agricultural projects and sustainability uh, alongside the mine, so that uh, the mine life of uh, over 20 years will be superseded by a, uh, an opportunity for the local community that uh, lives beyond the actual life of mine itself. Um, just a few pictures around this uh, area the, uh, we've managed during this past two years, in spite of the travel restrictions and so on, to complete a very extensive um, exploration program, including large diameter drilling and uh, um, Significantly, our local geologists uh, side of things has been key in that process when travel was not possible. And uh, Javier is actually enjoying the benefit of one of those guys who has moved across to Anglo-American um, late last year. And uh, so we're already uh, on our way for training <laughs> for, the, for the broader mining environments going forward. And just a few pictures in terms of the uh, existing infrastructure. Um, this is uh, Longonjo interconnected to the port of Lubito with its $2 billion um, upgrade uh, and uh, facilities associated with uh, hydroelectric power that are in close proximity to the project that make this project imminently more fundable than some of the other remote projects. Um, just to back up um, what Dr. Rocha mentions, uh, just a couple of issues on our experience in, in Angola. We have found uh, the uh, uh, ministry and the transition uh, away from uh, the, the previous dispensation where under which Ferengol um, administered the uh, concession uh, to be handled particularly smoothly and professionally um, in setting up the, uh, the, the, the new uh, regime. Um, and this is uh, confirmed with the likes of the World Bank who've uh, 
who've who've independently and from our personal experience can we can confirm that the COVID pandemic has 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 been handled well, um, possibly as a as a as a result of the previous Ebola mechanisms put in place. Angola was well prepared for the state of calamity and uh, and has intelligently navigated its way through that. Um, we expect that uh, the, the oil price and side of things will reduce the pressure on the economy and, and it will exit this uh, recessionary period at this point of, uh, in time. And importantly, Moody's upgrade um, of Angola in terms of its credit rating has, uh, is, a, is a very positive um, global indicator of the direction of travel in Angola. Um, the likes of the majors coming in and showing interest alongside uh, um, companies like Pensaner and uh, Lukaba, who are operating in the diamond fields up there, is, is, is particularly encouraging. And we believe that the investor outlook in terms of future activities in, in Angola is particularly strong. And I, and I just want to emphasize another point that uh, Dr. Rosha made is that um, the the management within the ministry and arm are technically competent people who understand what mining companies aspirations <clears throat> and the pragmatic aspects of exploration and mining uh, are, are doing we can uh, add my voice to the our experience of the team that's assembled in there and the positive way in which they receive comments and, and, and queries going forward. Um, just in terms of another independent look from the mining journal stacking Angola up against some of the West Australian um, or the Australian counterparts uh, where their exploration is also uh, in a particularly upwards uh, trend on infrastructure, fiscal terms and legal, um, the rating for Angola is highly competitive on a, a, across the board, and um, I'd encourage the uh, 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 the audience to go and have a look at these uh, comparators in, in in judging Angola in terms of its direction of travel. Just briefly, um, the uh, Pensana having. Uh, it, evaluated Longonjo, we've added a secondary beneficiation step uh, to the, uh, the output from Longonjo, which in, originally was going to be uh, heading to China for processing. Um, we've uh, upgrading the, the concentrate to produce a mixed rare earth sulfate, which can be exported to a facility for individual rare earth separation in the UK and also provides the opportunity to uh, in, <clears throat> include a diversity of feedstocks from other sources in, in this area. As, it's, as, I, as I mentioned, the growth output for rare earths is, is quite significant over the next decade or so, and we believe other projects will, will follow um, <clears throat> and then be a hub for uh, uh, use of that material in other processing facilities uh, to produce the actual permanent magnets that are uh, required for the EV and wind turbine industry. Um, this facility is uh, uh, in, uh, located in a, uh, a free port in uh, Hull in the UK uh, that's been recently proclaimed uh, with competitive uh, uh, free port terms and uh, is a state-of-the-art operationally designed to compete globally in terms of costs um, to uh, provide a feedstock that will allow us to further beneficiate in a growth phase towards uh, producing um, uh, higher uh, uh, quality material that can be incorporated into the magnet supply chain and as part of the zero carbon ambitions in the hull area also uh, provide a base that can recycle magnets for decommissioned wind turbines and, and, and the like 
in the future. So in terms of a vertical integration opportunity, this linkage that has been uh, and opportunity that has been and given by the mine in Angola has got uh, fairly far reaching consequences. And at the end of the development of this project will supply circa 5% of the uh, magnet metals required globally. Um, our plans over the next 12 months or so include finalization of the uh, front end engineering and design. I'm sure you can all understand that COVID impacts and so on are, are, uh, are <clears throat> hopefully dwindling over the, the next uh, few months and we'll get to a state where of, uh, we're able to conclude our uh, engineering studies and, and move into the construction phase and um, start awarding uh, contractors and aligned with that and the aspirations that I in terms of recycling and uh, conversion plants that uh, we believe salt end adds value to the uh, the Longonjo operations um, we're engaged on numerous uh, financing opportunities at this point in time um, with a focus obviously on uh, uh, the Angolan space being a key factor for um, risk mitigation in uh, many financiers' eyes. Um, in addition to that, we have uh, uh, we'll be restarting work and ramping up in 2022 on a, a second phase um, uh, in uh, our in our uh, second. Uh, 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 prospecting license area, which is just north of the Longonjo area in, in, in Kula, which has also got a number of identified carbonatites. We've done, had uh, uh, several field trips and samples that uh, in the next few months will be uh, starting to indicate areas to, to, to focus on in that project going forward with encouraging results just to uh, add to um, the news from the geological survey about uh, uh, the uh, opportunities for ND and PR, that is definitely a high signature area. Um, we're backed up to conclude by a, a board of, uh, of experienced uh, uh, across, uh, across various sectors, uh, um, assisted by Lindsay Northover, who has been the DIT um, representative in an Angola and Zambia previously. Um, and just to point out, Rocky Smith is one of the few um, Western rare earth uh, uh, specialists and, and experts having managed mountain pass operations uh, in, in, in the US in the past. And uh, <clears throat> in terms of the uh, status of, of uh, stature of the likes of Jeremy Beaton, who uh, directed the London bid on, on Olympics and has been involved in uh, uh, significant project development with Bechtel and, and Lang in, in the UK in the past. And uh, our chairman, Paul Atherley, has, uh, has <clears throat> developed several of these projects in the past, and that team is an indication of the scope and stature that you need to uh, kickstart a project in Angola going forward. Um, thank you for your attention. Look forward to hearing if there are any questions. Thank you very much, Tim, much appreciated. Uh, we'll try and get some questions at the end, although we're, we're running out of time at the moment. So if I quickly pass on to our next speaker, um, who is uh, the vice chair of the UK Anglo um, Connect? It's Etuiva Nogueira. So, if I can hand over to you, uh, Etuiva. Thank you very much, Chef. Uh, good morning, all. Um, after all this interesting information um, about our mining sector in Angola and our developments, uh, is now a time to raise a little bit the flag about business connections in Angola. So I'm here in representation of our British Angola Chamber of Commerce, uh, which is basically a non-for-profit association, but 
uh, with the aim to connect businesses uh, between Angola and the UK. So the chamber was incorporated in January uh, 2016, just with this main effort, connect businesses and promote them, especially between these two countries. Of course, we aim to be an active voice for the Angolan economic, um, So, but all always looking beyond uh, our main commodity. Uh, we are not talking here about oil, now we are focusing on mining, but uh, we are also promoting businesses related to agriculture, food industries, education, energy, and health. Um, as, as our main goal is to be a promoter of great partnerships between, between our, our members, but also as, um, a guidance for new market players. So uh, all of those that are interested in knowing more uh, or entering into the Angolan market, but are not aware of uh, or, or are finding difficulties, which sometimes is, is, is very challenging to find great partnerships, to find the, the fit partner. Um, we are here to promote that. We are here to help that between our members um, get involved with us, uh, trust in our knowledge because we also have a very diverse board of directors, which reflects the diversity uh, of, of, of our economy. So uh, we have uh, people from banking, agriculture, uh, arts and culture, uh, co financial consultancy, legal. So. All these represent what we have in our chamber. Um, there is also an advantage in connecting with the chamber in the sense that uh, our, our strong knowledge of the market, um, it's, it's, it's a very good guidance of the business ecosystem in Angola. Um, not just the legal, the, legal, the legal challenges that one can face uh, and sometimes may need uh, may need guidance prior to, to enter the market, but uh, about the opportunities as well. We are here also to flag those opportunities, but not just uh, in, in the sense of uh, incoming, of course, we are looking for incoming investment, but also for Angolan companies that are looking um, to, to invest and to, and, and to enter the British market. This is a two-way relationship that we want to promote. So um, get in touch with the chamber, um, just under, try to understand what are our main benefits, what are our goals. Uh, we, apart from the from the, the 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 business events that we have, that we also have uh, another type of 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 of, of um, connections that we can promote. For instance, we work very closely with the, with the UK embassy. In, we thank you at uh, this moment. I can thank you at this moment, the invitation that came from the DIT, um, because this is our, one of our main goals, not just to act uh, looking for the businesses, but also to help the embassy itself and the, the DIT to identify those opportunities um, as well. So please get in touch with us um, and try to understand a little bit more of what we can do, uh, try to find the, the, the great partners that, uh, with, that we have amongst our members. Thank you. Thank you ever so much, Intuio. Well, it sounds to me that, uh, you know, it's, it's a market that has often been overlooked by, by British companies and, um, with, and, and with, a, with a language that isn't uh, our, our first language. It seems that your support and help that you can provide in navigating the landscape would be much appreciated. So thank you ever so, ever so much. Um, finally, I'm going to hand over to um, Eden Clayton from DIT Angola, who's joining us from Angola now. Eden. Thank you very much. Let me just add on my presentation slide as well. Can you, uh, Jeff, can you see that? Is it loaded? It has, yes, thank you. Excellent. So firstly, I'd like to thank everyone for the speeches and their participation so far. This is the first ever event that we have run for DIT in Angola on mining. So I think that shows the, um, the growing opportunities that we've heard about. Uh, thank you to Dr. Jacinto and for Paolo as well for their technical and interesting study or presentations rather of the situation in Angola, both in terms of the legislative and business framework and in the wider geological opportunities that you can see. In addition, I think that Anglo-American and Pensano have done a good job of illustrating the positive experiences that they've had in the market to date. 
Uh, and also thank you to Twaver for the shout out as well, that we work closely with the Chamber and the IT here in Rwanda. So the main thing I want to talk about, and I'm conscious of time, uh, is the follow up to this webinar. So we are planning our first ever trade mission for mining in Angola, which will be the end of March this year, from the 27th to the 31st. And we've got quite an ambitious uh, plan for the trade mission. We want to showcase Angola, we want to showcase the infrastructure that Tim has referred to, and that I believe it was um, Paolo referred to, in terms of the railways and the ports. Um, and what we are planning to do is to organize a visit, which will showcase this alongside the legislative framework and the long-term investability of Angola. We are yet to finalize the agenda, but details will be announced soon. We are planning to take the delegation down to Wambo, give an experience of traveling on the Benguela Railway west to visit the Pensana site on Gonjo and onto the port of Lubito with an overnight stay there and a visit to the mineral terminal at the port before returning to Luanda and having a conference or presentation, hopefully with financial analysts and firm representatives from the mineral agencies have already spoken to really showcase the longer term opportunities uh, and to give chance for investors to raise any questions or concerns that they may have. So if you're interested in taking part in this trade mission, either from the UK side or on the Angolan side, please get in touch. My email is down on the slide, eden.clayton.fcdo.gov.uk, and we'll be happy to share the information once we have it in due course. Okay, thank you, Jeff, and thank you, everyone. Thank you ever so much, Eden. Um, well, I've, I've been, uh, I, I think for myself, I've been blown away by just how much work is going on um, and how far Angola has come in transforming itself in the last few years to make itself such an attractive destination. Um, I guess my question, and I, we really are short of time, so we'll have two questions. Um, and in fact, um, let's, let's take one from Max, who's been good on the Q and A's. Um, uh, he says, do you expect greater investment in automation and digitalization and go to mining industry in the near future? And what are the biggest hurdles to these technological upgrades? Um, and, and has there been an increase in demand for Angola's minerals um, recently? So I think let's take the first one. Has anyone got a view on um, the, the requirement um, for Angola's interest? Have we seen an in, a, a steep increase in mining companies or midstream companies uh, being attracted to operate in Angola? Does anyone want to answer that quickly? I think I would I would venture into answering the, this question uh, in relation to whether there has been a steep. It has not been steep, but the fact that uh, Anglo, the beers, Rio Tinto, have decided to come into Angola, it shows that uh, those who will be last will be the losers. So the, the, time, the time is now to come. The majors are coming. Let the juniors come. So there is, there is a move uh, towards the increase in the number of investors coming in. Unfortunately, many have been affected by, by COVID. But once this pandemic is gone, uh, Angola will be a country that will open its arms to investors who would want to, to come into Angola. In relation to the first question on the technology, companies like Pensana, Anglo, other ones who are going to introduce the, these technologies into the country. I know Angola has got a policies in advancing and promoting uh, the use of new technologies. We know that we have adopted uh, 5G. I know that it is a contentious issue, but just to show that uh, Angola is not uh, immune to promoting the use of new technologies. We have challenges in the, the further you go from Luanda, there may be access issues, but this is, this is what the Angolan government has been focused on in, in trying to improve access to, to new technologies, the, the, further, the furthest you go uh, from Luanda. Jeff, if I might just add there, um, for example, on a practical scale, we have, uh, uh, we've got benefits at Pensana in terms of the fiber optic that comes up the railway line and uh, the, you know, the scope for in expanding that in, in terms of the 
growing um, hydroelectric interconnector lines and so on is there um, from that point of view. So it's already happening and we've been able during COVID to maintain excellent communications with, um, with the site, which is some 270 kilometers inland from, uh, from the Port of Lobito. Um, so those um, practical uh, improvements uh, are in are, are there and in progress and further potential, uh, as Dr. Rocha has, has mentioned, is there. Brilliant. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rocha. Thank you, uh, Tim. So look, we're, we're over time now, but I'd like to ask one kind of final question. Or mm, actually, I'm going to go for two because I feel we've had a great presentation. Lots of people say what excellent uh, presentations and, and great story that we have. So, uh, so one of those is on ESG, and, and a lot of you mentioned the importance of doing things environmentally, uh, socially, and governance uh, correctly, and then making sure that new investments and new projects meet the standards that you're you're talking about. Part of that is is the environment, um, and um, so the clean energy opp opportunities. Uh, perhaps we could go into a little bit very quickly when setting up a new mine or a new project, um, the access to, to energy, is, is, is it widespread across the whole nation? Uh, is, there, is there things pushing forwards there? The, there are still challenges. One is to, to, to acknowledge, uh, and this is something that the Angolan government has identified. We, we have projects, if you recall recently in the UN, the president uh, committed himself to having 70% of energy provision in Angola by being renewable, uh, clean energy. So we, we have challenges, we, uh, we acknowledge, and the best way to address problems is when you, address, you, you acknowledge that you have challenges, because then you work, you work, work very hard to find solutions. And this is what we are doing. We, we know that we have a, a major solar solar energy project in Southern Angola, uh, which is led by, by Sonangol. And wherever companies go in terms of if they face difficulties in accessing the traditional sources of energy, then the use of renewable solar, it's, it's something that they can, can also introduce. And we are going to be, be there to support you as facilitators in, in this process. So as I've mentioned, the agencies that to regulate but one of our arms also is to promote. So in this process, wherever companies find challenges, we are going to use our promotion arm to assist the companies to, to reduce the challenges that they face uh, with, within the country. You have noticed um, it is not about the uh, infrastructure, not the technology, but you have also noticed here that language is not an issue for us. We have made presentations in, in English, so don't, don't worry about you trying to search for, for a translator for you to come into Angola because the official language in Angola is Portuguese. We speak English and we'll be able to communicate with you. Brilliant. Oh, have you? Yeah, if I cut tip in there, like as, as, as mentioned, we are in very early stages in Angola, so really brief explorations. However, like us as a company, we have a target by 2040 to be like carbon neutral in all of our operations. And at the same time, like it works to mention that our operations in South America now, they are basically working with just renewable energies. So, so in the event that basically like we find something, that's the way that mines will be developed in the future. So that's something that in, in, in companies that are basically doing like responsible mining, that's already embedded. Uh, and in our case, it's, we have a clear target by 2014 to be our carbon neutral in all of the operations. So in the case that we have something in Angola, that will be the, the path to go. Thank you ever so much, Javier. Well, look, um, we're, we're over time now. I think it's been an excellent session. You've outlined such an important um, steps that the country has taken. Um, and I hope that the British companies and other countries around the world, uh, companies listening in, um, are, are, are going to take uh, um, Eden's uh, trade mission, come and see what's available, come and see the opportunities. Uh, and we, I just want to say thank you to everyone on our panel who's spoken today. 
we look forward to working with you in the future. Uh, and thank you to the participants who have listened in uh, and, and been very active on the chat and in the questions. Uh, a lot of people very interested. So thank you ever so much to everyone. I hope you have a very good day and we shall see you all soon.